welcome to the first week of EGM 702, Photogrammetry and Advanced Image Analysis. This is part one of week one, what is photogrammetry? So in the first week, we're going to be covering the fundamentals of photogrammetry, beginning with this lesson, which is what is photogrammetry, uh, followed by a lesson on scale and parallax, another lesson on stereophotogrammetry, control points, and then finally we'll talk about acquisition planning or how to actually go out and plan for acquiring photographs. So to start with, we ask the question, what is photogrammetry? And if you go to the font of all knowledge on the internet, reddit.com, and go to the photogrammetry subreddit, you will see posts like this one, which I guess means that photogrammetry is somehow an old shoe that is filled with plants. Really though, photogrammetry is the science or technique of obtaining reliable measurements of objects from photographs. Now, when I say reliable, what I mean is accurate, precise measurements, so things that we can trust when we're, when we're using them for different applications, and when we say photographs, what we used to mean was film photographs, but most of the time now what we're talking about are digital photographs or scanned copies of film photographs. So the next question that we might ask ourselves is, how is photogrammetry? Or more exactly, how do we do photogrammetry? And the first thing we need is some equipment. So we'll start with the cameras. Um, so this is an example of an old aerial mapping camera uh, from the early 20th century. And I don't know if you can tell from this photo, but this weighs somewhere on the range of about 75 pounds. Um, so we're not going to be holding this thing and taking photos. We're going to actually put this on some kind of a platform. And for a lot of the different purposes that we might have, uh, we're going to use an airplane of some kind. So we take the camera, we put it on a mount on an airplane or some other aircraft, and we go off and we acquire our photos. The next step is visualization or processing. And again, in the olden times, uh, you would use something called a stereo plotter, which looks a bit like this, uh, this machine here and you would take each of your two photographs, you would put one on the left side of the machine, one on the right side of the machine, and then you look through the viewfinder here and it actually uh, shows you the two images in stereo mode or right, where you actually see depth. Um, nowadays we use specialized software for the most part, um, although you can still find these machines around and they're kind of fun to play with. Another question you might ask is, why is photogrammetry? So for the most part, what we're looking to do is quickly, and by quickly I don't necessarily mean fast in time, but you know, a way to accurately measure things that are hard to measure. So a lot of applications of uh, photogrammetry are going to be somehow to do with mapping. And I don't know if you've ever done mapping in the field, but it is an extremely time-consuming process. Um, but if we take, for example, an unmanned uh, aerial vehicle or a camera in an airplane, we can map a large area very quickly. So mapping is one of the big applications of photogrammetry, as seen in this um, compilation of one of the early uh, aerial surveys of New York City. Uh, I think sometime in the 1920s. We also see a lot of photogrammetry applications in military reconnaissance, and there are some applications we'll talk about next week uh, that make use of a lot of these um, photographs once they've been declassified. We might also study coastal erosion. Uh, it's a big one that we use here at the University of Ulster. Um, glacier change is another uh, example that I'll probably come back to quite a bit. Uh, it's sort of near and dear to my heart. And then archaeology is another interesting one, and especially 
uh, when we're talking about either large um, sites, um, you know, former monuments or cities, uh, but also we can do photogrammetry on small objects like the uh, piece of pottery that you can see here. So where do we do photogrammetry? Well, wherever we can get a camera. So on Earth, that might be a remote field site, such as the cave shown here uh, in this photograph from the European Space Agency, uh, busy city centers like we saw with the example of uh, the aerial survey of New York City. Uh, we might also use photogrammetry to take measurements of the moon. Um, as has been done uh, for quite a long while, or places like Mars. Um, really, again, anywhere that we can get a camera, anywhere that we're interested in observing, uh, we can do photogrammetry. So the last question that we'll try to answer in this lesson is, who is photogrammetry? And I've shown one example already of archaeologists. Um, this is a, a big field where they use photogrammetry for a lot of different applications, from mapping monuments and cities to uh, making 3D measurements of smaller objects. Uh, architects is another big uh, field. Um, so this example here shows the Cathedral of Notre Dame in Paris, a 3D model that you can find on sketchfab.com. Um, and there are plenty of examples of this. This is one of the, um, actually one of the fields that gave us one of the bigger revolutions under, that's currently underway in photogrammetry, which is called Structure from Motion, which we'll talk a little bit more about this week. Uh, engineers are another big example. Um, so pretty much anything that you can think of that an engineer might be interested in uh, studying or in uh, designing. Um, they can use photogrammetry and often do use photogrammetry for it. I've shown quite a number of examples for geoscientists and we'll see quite a bit more next week. Um, but that's another field where we use photogrammetry quite a bit. Uh, surprisingly, or perhaps surprisingly, movie makers uh, is another, uh, especially now with the advent of uh, more and more uh, computer generated images, um, we see movie makers using photogrammetry to make films such as The Matrix, which you can see here. Uh, also video game designers. So the more realistic the video game, uh, the more likely it is that they're going to try to use uh, photogrammetry to actually make, uh, make elements of the game or make some of the, the background sets and other things like that. And also you. Uh, you are going to be doing some photogrammetry for this course, so um, you're on that list as well. And there are, of course, many, many more examples of people using photogrammetry in their work. So to sum up, uh, photogrammetry is the science of making reliable, which is accurate and precise, measurements using photographs or some format of uh, camera generated image. Many different applications uh, of photogrammetry across a wide range of disciplines that we've that we've looked at here and you can find more examples online uh, and this is something that can be done relatively inexpensively so uh, something that if you're designing field studies this is a good way to get quite a lot of measurements in a relatively short period of time. So um, I have some additional resources here uh, on Blackboard. You'll find the a, a PDF copy of the Templi et al. book that you can download. And in chapter nine, they talk a little bit more about photogrammetry. The textbook from uh, Lillisand, Kiefer, and Chipman in chapter three uh, talks quite a bit about photogrammetry. And you can read a little bit more there. Um, there's also this video from Climabyte on YouTube, which you can go check out uh, to talk a little bit more about photogrammetry. Uh, I mentioned as well the Reddit, um, subreddit for photogrammetry, and a place that you can go to look for uh, different 3D models and, and other things is sketchfab.com. Okay, that's it for this lesson. I hope you found it interesting, and if you have any questions, please post them in the discussion forum on Blackboard. Thanks. Bye.